Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 3 of Mummy Necromancer. I'm your host, Ultraviolet4. Say things are going okay. Not great, but they're going okay. We ended up picking up our god, Kiku, in the last one. Don't ask me to try to say the full name. Okay, you can ask me. Uh, Kiku Bakadiga. Kiku for short. <laughs> Um, I don't know, you don't ever try to say that name because that is some sort of, whoops, monstrosity of a name. Kiku Bucket, yeah, Kiku. Alright, so Kiku will give us a bunch of different gifts that have necromancy, and he's going to ultimately, if we get there, give us a pain weapon or a necronomicon. Um, he also gives us corpse delivery, which, with our animate dead we have, allows us to make... Uh, a whole bunch of zombies. The way that it works is he's not an invocations god. So you see here, I haven't been given the choice to train invocations. The strength and I think also the number of the zombies you get with corpse delivery. Well, first of all, it depends on where you are. So if you're in, um, it's kind of like shadow creatures. If you're in lair, you get lair enemies. If you're in the dungeon, you get dungeon enemies. Orc, you get orc enemies and so on. But the strength of those zombies and the number you get, I believe both of those things um, are affected by your necromancy skill. So training necromancy with Kiku, not only is it good because you're probably casting necromancy spells, but it also improves your god abilities. Okay. Another thing that I think is worth mentioning here is that Gozag is a really, really, really good god for mummies. And the main reason for that is for his ability of Potion Petition. It doesn't technically count as a potion. So it allows mummies who don't have any other way of getting haste, might, any of those potion effects. Heal wounds, for example, haste, any of those things, it allows you to get them. And that alone is really, really, really strong. Uh, the problem is that... Uh, Gozag is really anti-synergistic with a necromancer. <laughs> uh, and not even just an anti-synergistic, it actually just does not even work at all. Um, one of the effects Gozag has is that he turns all corpses into piles of gold, so you have nothing to ever animate. Basically, you can't be a necromancer of Gozag, which is why I've gone with Kiku. But if you're any other sort of mummy, Gozag, very strong god choice. Alright. We also downgraded in terms of our armor. We went from uh, the ring mail we had to a robe of magic resistance. But uh, the reason I've done that is because we're so afraid of hexes and confusion in particular that I don't mind having a bit less AC. And I dove to get to this floor with magic mapping to find the temple. So we're going to go back up and we're going to finish clearing our D6. Okay, another ogre. Um, I'm still not really game to go fight Sigmund yet. Okay, good. Oh, that's still, it's just so scary fighting ogres. Um, yeah, I'm not game to fight Sigmund yet because even though I have a bit more MR, he could still confuse me. And his flow, flow, throw flame is still really dangerous, especially if he goes invis. Against these guys at the moment, all I have is Enslave or Control Undead. Yep, so I got the Dream there, because I enslaved one of them, which means he's going to get trapped fighting them. Can I tell my, my Ogre to fight this guy? No, apparently not. Um, I, could, I could, if I hit Control, I can swing at this guy, and then, oh, what a boss, he, he actually knew who the real threat was. He went after the ogre rather than me. Alright, well I should go back to the stair before I do this. Uh, although that doesn't work because I was thinking that as a undead a zombie can't go upstairs, but they definitely can. Um, I don't think I can fight him, so I just control, control him. And I go TR to retreat, I just say go away from me. Uh, because there's not much else I can do against just one white. Kiku will eventually 
I believe he's guaranteed to give me um, Dispel Undead. So ultimately we will have a plan to deal with undead things. But for the moment, uh, not much of one. I haven't found Remove Curse yet, so I can't try on these rings. He has a Hand Axe of Alec. Alright, I think we want that. Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, the Dagger of Venom might be better. The Hand Axe of Alec definitely does more damage if I just want to tab things. But uh, the Dagger of Venom lets me hit things and then run away. So I think I'll hold on to the Hand Axe, but uh, the Dagger of Venom is a better one to have. Although, not against this guy. Okay. I'm going to put it on B by pressing equals I. Um, let's fight him first. Okay, yep. So we, we procked our lightning and then that killed him. Against something that's poison immune, like that zombie. Uh, the hand, ac hand axe of Alec is definitely the better choice. Right, so if you'll see that I put my two weapons on A and B. If you now hit apostrophe, it will switch between A and B. That's a nice little trick. Uh, most useful if you have a ranged weapon and a melee weapon, and you're switching a lot. But also pretty good if you just have two weapons. Look at this, this little skeleton army we've got going. There's McLevin's in. Here's Pikel. Um When I glanced at my enemy list over here, I had a bit of a panic attack because I saw three red monsters at once. But the angel and the blizzard demon are safely behind glass here. Alright, if he's got he's got a whip of flaming, so that's actually so bad for us, because the silver one would fire. Um, if he's got some sort of a wand, we could also be in a lot of trouble. Pikel often has wands, uh, especially if he has a wand of confusion, although I guess paralysis is just as bad, although there's a um, there's an orc wizard, so we need to just be going straight back to the stairs. Pikel with a whip of flaming is bad enough on his own. Uh, to then have an Orc Wizard as well is um, absolutely not something we can do. We can take the Slave up. Take this slowly because they hurt surprisingly hard in melee. Okay, and um, the problem is it here is if Pikel has wandered up. I don't want to fight him and a Wizard. I'm just going to go to a, a new stair. Here's a White. I could probably fight this white now that I have a hand axe of a leck. Yeah. Good. Why did Kiku accept my kill? I thought he didn't like undead kills. Interesting. Alright. Uh, so, new stair. Uh, we know Pikel's wandering around somewhere. That's a, a null sergeant with three nulls. Um, so, we're heading back up to the stair. Don't want to be. Oh, and there's a, a bullfrog. Uh, I don't want the frog with me. No, I'll just go up. I'm going to X this out too. The frog you can't run from, so it's kind of scary. And then particularly if you're also fighting a null sergeant at the same time. What's this third step? Oh yeah, okay, that's the one near the temple. That one's fine. <laughs> Alright, all these zombies that we can't really fight. Jelly we can. We're still mostly reliant on our level 1 spell for pain on D7. It's kind of funny. Um, okay, the bullfrog, well, we're no longer running. I think we can just fight him. If I were extremely uncertain about it, I could just run back through this door and then shut the door. Because it's a frog. The frog's not clever enough to know how to open doors. But... Uh, with vamp training, I don't think a frog beats us in one-on-one -on -one combat. Yeah, look how much damage it does. Good. And we'll animate dead him. Alright, we've got a worker ant zombie and a bullfrog skeleton. I think they can probably kill a North Sergeant. Yep. More int. Especially if we shoot a couple of pains as he's approaching. A pretty good army going. Um, I'm going to have to rest though because I'm completely out of mono and none of them timed out. That's pretty cool.
Right. Still got Pakel wandering around. Um, would have been good if I could fight him with the frog zombies still. Um, I'm kind of tempted to try to walk up to this frog and stab it, but I actually have only 1.5 stealth. Uh, that's stealth we started with, I guess. So I'm probably not getting a stab off. Because he's asleep, I may as well throw a javelin. It's not going to miss. Okay, we got decent damage off that. We didn't take any damage. That's pretty cool. Naga biting. I would really like it if I could get a buckler. But I don't think I've seen one. No, I have not. Where are you, Pikel? There's a shield though. Um, I could put it on to demonstrate to you that I probably won't be able to cast my spells. But we still haven't seen remove curse. And even though that's a plain item, it could be cursed. So if I put this shield on, um, yeah, we could get totally screwed over. So that's the that's the way that it is when even plain items can be cursed. I'm so afraid fighting in a weird spot like this, um, especially when Pikel was down there, because uh, for all I know he's coming from behind me. I want to test this hatch up too. Yeah. On our Orberon, that might be important. I don't know. Yeah. More jewelry. Again, we can't try that on. Um. Let's see. Well, the iguana might. He didn't do that much. Uh, this little bit here we haven't seen, so there's potentially an enemy there that's going to trap us between me and Pikel. Um, I have a teleport though, so I could get away. The main thing I'm worried about here is if he has a wand, um, which he often does, we could be in trouble. But we're maybe okay. Let's see, we'll start fighting him, and then I don't know, we might just die. I'll throw a javelin. Alright. A few pains. Man, he's okay. About to be on top of me and he's got a whip of flaming. Which is gonna do a lot of damage. I've got vamp training, which is good, I guess. So I don't know, let's see how this one goes. Alright, uh, let's vamp train him. Alright, nothing happens because I'm at full health. I forgot that, okay. If you're not missing HP, your vamp training does nothing. Alright, let's go. Take this slowly. He's resisted two of them so far. 84% chance to get him and twice he's resisted. Alright, just take this slow. Alright, he went down. Okay, good. We got two, one piety there. So we immediately got a Kiku gift. Uh, let's pick that up. It is Kiku's Grimoire of Dark Rituals. We can read this, right? I mean, it's just a book. No harm's ever come from reading a book, right? Let's see. Amon Ra, Amon De, Imhotep in Sowe, Yatowe, Yatowe, Yatowe. <laughs> Oh god, I think I wasn't meant to read the book. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, this only has one spell in it that we don't already know, and that is Corpse Rot. That's probably worth learning. Um, Corpse Rot is deceptively powerful. It doesn't seem on the face of it. When you have a look at its description, it accelerates the decomposition of any corpses laying around and makes foul miasma. That sounds kind of underwhelming, but the thing about it, if you use it properly, it's actually quite powerful. Because for this early part of the game, Miasma just wrecks things. It takes a bit of setup though, you've got to use it when you know a monster is standing on top of a corpse. Because most monsters aren't so dumb that they'll just walk into it. Um, but yeah, uh, it's definitely worth learning. It's on B. I think I'd like it to be on S, probably. 
All right. And this is an artifact ring, which we definitely can't put on. Uh, no ID. It could have drain. It could have... Contamination isn't that bad for us because as a mummy, you can't actually mutate. Um, if you're ever going to get mutated, you actually just get... Uh, what's it called? You get rotted and you lose your stats. Um, let's see. So... It costs 3 piety for received corpses, which is a nice ability we have now. Uh, means we can, at any time now, we can get an army that we can either animate dead, or we could also try to use the corpses that we call in to set up a corpse rot. Cool. And what else was here? Just the whip of flame. Alright. Uh, I maybe should have just demonstrated Corpse Rock. Got even more rings. Uh, more magic mapping. We'll start hanging on to those now. Now that we found the temple, we're not looking for um, anything in particular. That was just a fashion. Okay. For a second I thought that was an artifact sword. I was getting kind of excited. But no, it was not. Down to D8. Um, and add a zombie. Uh, we switched to our Hanak of a Lek. Which is the only way we have of hurting those. Kiku's still accepting my kill. So maybe it's, um, I guess not too long ago they changed it so that most gods were more accepting of kills. So I guess Kiku doesn't mind undead now. Could I stab? No. <laughs> Didn't think so. Uh, we need a vamp train. Cause that guy is beating us. We're getting bested in combat. Okay, so did I get a corpse there? There's something else laying underneath. It might be corpse. Just for science, that's corpse rot. There you go. See, it instantly killed that guy. And then well, he's just gonna throw rocks at us. But like this in a hallway, we can use corpse rot kind of like um, conjure flame. So he's just gonna sit there because he doesn't want to walk in it. And then we can just kill him with pain. That was a whip of venom. Uh, would I prefer a whip of venom to a dagger? I don't know. Maybe if it's got a plus enchantment, but again, it could be cursed. So it's kind of like a risk that I don't really need to take. Uh, because it means that I won't be able to use my hand axe of a leg. Alright. So we're really, we're really struggling with the lack of removed curses here. Uh, the step back I took there was just so um, I don't want to block the door with his corpse. In case I need to then shut it. Uh, it's a, just a little a small thing that sometimes happens. Small little optimal play. Not killing enemies on doors. You want, you want every advantage you can get when you're playing a mummy. Am I right? Let's go hand axe. More rings. Really like remove curse. What other spells do we have? Appetition, Confusing Touch, none of those. Um, I check my spells, everything's at 1% failure. I think 10 Necromancy is probably fine for all the things we have. Um, I could train more and it would give me more power on my vamp training, which I guess is pretty good, but uh, it's not really a hurry. And you can see these numbers here in blue show you the relative cost. So. My necromancy is up to 13, whereas all these spells are at 1 point, all these other skills are at 1.4, etc. So I think I'd prefer to just um, stop focusing necromancy, we'll just train it a bit. Probably we have enough spell casting too. Um, 8.4 is kind of a number that I don't like looking at though. Uh, let's take that to at least 9, so it's a round number. And I'm going to focus my fighting for more HP. I'm going to turn on my dodging. While I'm wearing a robe, there's not really much point training armor. Because, and our, our scarf is zero base armor as well. So we're basically getting, uh, or we would get very little returns out of any armor training. Sweet. All right, uh, this is two double-headed ogres. That's absolutely insane. Uh, even just a double-headed ogre is really scary at this point. You can see it's red, but we got two of them. So I think this might be a good time to check out our corpse 
delivery. Shout out to probably my favorite, maybe not my favorite, but one of my favorite tournament team names of all time, which is Kiku's Delivery Service. I think that's so clever. Uh, it's the movie Kiki's Delivery Service and then also referencing received corpses. So let's get some corpses delivered. We got a centaur and a leopard gecko. They're not really that exciting. Um, they are just going to get absolutely destroyed by a two-headed ogre. But we could use them to corpse rot. Oh, we, wait, no, we also got a hydra zombie. Never mind. Uh, that's really good then. <laughs> I was like, man, this is such an underwhelming corpse delivery. But then hydra zombies are basically the absolute bomb. Okay, so let's um, corpse rot them. One more thing to note just before I do this is that once upon a time you could pick corpses up so you could actually carry them around and then you could make your own corpse traps but uh, no longer. That was degenerate behavior. Alright so let's animate dead them. And we got a troll. Wow okay. So that was way better than I thought. Okay it's really um, the zombies, the zombie, sorry the zombie, the hydra zombie that's gonna do most of the work here. Go hydra zombie. Okay, it died, but I know there's um, there's at least another two-headed height, um, two-headed ogre corpse there. So I could animate that and hope that um, the zombie kills the real one, but it might not. So I think when he steps on it, oh, oh, I just got too random energy. He, he stayed where he was, so I waited a turn, and then he ran him energy over it. We just got so outplayed. So, so, so outplayed there. GG, two-headed ogre. Random energy master. Um, <laughs> uh, what I could do is sort of loop him around this pillar, come back again, and then corpse rot him again. But I don't know what's in here. If this is some insane vault that has even more two-headed ogres, we could be in trouble. But I guess in that case I could teleport, or I could just um, call for more corpses. So I think that would be the play that I go for. Did he just forget about me? Wow, I think he did. Well, he's out playing me again because he knows what's up. Okay, he wandered off completely. Let's animate the two-headed ogre. Uh, okay, there wasn't actually a corpse there. Alright, so I guess I didn't get outplayed too heavily. Um, well, I need to be just running back for the stairs, which are so far away. Oh man, this is a complete trek. Um, how do we even get to it from here? Go around there. Can't go that way. We have to go all the way around to the left. Okay, so we're about to go on a massive... Um, hike to get back to our stair. Or I could corpse delivery again. Um, I guess I may as well just use my piety. Yeah, okay. Um, the thing about piety is that you should think of it as a resource. Um, just use it. We're trying to win the game, not trying to get to max piety. So, yeah. Just do it. And shoot a couple of pains at him. Um, although I don't think this is working. I'm going to do a little bit of a loop around so that um, I get my zombies back on top of him. Okay. Mm. Did not work. What I can do, here's a, here's a little trick. It's kind of like um, walking around a pillar, but uh, it's a little bit, I wanted to say more technical, but <laughs> it's not really more technical. Um, but anyway, when you have a monster like this and a door between you, you can close the door and then the monster will open it. And you can keep doing that until the monster random energies to walk through the door. But my plan here is that as I close the door and the ogre continually opens it, uh, my two-headed ogre zombie is just going to get free shots in. So I close the door. That's basically exactly what happened. 
see here, I close the door, the two-headed ogre zomb um, open the door, and then my zombie hit him twice. So that's going to be the play here. I close the door, open it, for some reason my zombie is walking away. Why are you walking away, zombie? Where did you go? He just decided that he couldn't... <laughs> okay, well the plan was good until my zombie just decided he'd had enough. Uh, I guess he... When I closed the door, he was like, okay, so uh, I can't get to you, so I need to run around this way. Hopefully he comes back. I feel like he's not. Okay, so that was a really legit plan, except for some reason my my zombie just took off. Alright, so I guess he's dead to me. Um, I'll start walking back this way. If I'm lucky, my zombie actually walked along the top, so I'm going to meet him. But... Yeah, that's really quite annoying. Where are you, zombie? Yeah, I got random energy, so he caught me. Alright, there's my zombie. So that is what happened. He was trying to be helpful, but he would be much more helpful if he just stood there and hit the guy. Alright, so we'll start heading this way back to the stair. This two-headed ogre zombie is... Um, I keep saying zombie. This two-headed ogre is nearly dead, but... Uh, the potential for him to just really quickly kill me is really high. He can hit for 15 and 20, which is 35, plus his two clubs, which we found out were... Uh, that was last episode, so it's gone now, but a lot of damage. Basically, he can very easily two-shot me. Might even be able to one-shot me. Let's see. Giant spiked club is apparently I can't see it 22 damage so it's 22 and 20 which is 42 oh I meant to hit X and then move the cursor but I accidentally just ran at him okay that was so bad um, well I ran him and you'd away from him again but oh man okay um, <laughs> so I was trying to show that he could one shot me as I then um, accidentally just run straight at him. So he can do 35 plus 42, which is um, 77. So yeah, he can one-shot us. If he if he rolls max damage on his two attacks and his two weapons, that, I mean, that's really unlikely. But theoretically, we could die in one hit to him. Oh man, we, we even have to run all the way over the top because if we open the door here, um, he'll catch us. All right. Um, I could corpse delivery again, but uh, it would take one turn to deliver them, and then in the one turn that I resurrect them, he could one shot me. So we're just walking away. <laughs> Man, <laughs> this episode was starting out so well, and then this happened. Okay, he ran him energy on top of me. So I need to walk him around this pillar until we open up a gap, which we just did. Again, okay. Alright, so we're exiting that stair out. Don't go down there and get one shot. Uh, let's pick a new one. There's a wizard. Now that we have one point of MR, his confusers dropped to 5%, which is much more manageable. He had a dagger of draining. Interesting. Uh, also, he had a scroll of ID. So I think the thing that I'd most like to know is this artifact ring. Oh, yes, yes, it has RF. Okay, so we slam that. Oh, uh, accidentally, what did I do? Oh, okay. Um, well, I accidentally did corpse delivery. Uh, the reason I did that is because I had a macro on um, P, which is for AA, and I did that when I was playing Fedas. So I need to clear that. Okay, good. Uh, I was meaning to press Shift P, which is to put items on. So when I was saying use your piety, I didn't mean use it like this. Um, anyway, so we, we have RF now. So we're now, we're now a normal species as far as being vulnerable to fire goes. Uh, this gives us the ability to blink, which... Um, it's 28% failure. 
This makes me really tempted to learn a bit of evocations. Um, but we don't have any wands, so I'd be training it purely for this blink. Um, it's pretty good though. Hmm. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say we're going to find some wands at some point. So even just having a few points of evocations will make them a bit better. And having a blink ability is really good as a panic button. Right, so let's go. If there's something bad here, we can at least pull it back up into all our corpses. But, yeah, nothing here. Okay, uh, Centaur. Uh, we have repel missiles, which is really good. But I still want to just walk back to the stair. Okay, I'll call him. And I want to step around this corner. Oh man, he's, he's a tricky Centaur. Um, he's going to see me. Whichever way I go, so I just go back upstairs. Okay, I can probably. I was hoping he would come closer, and then I could take him up. He's not. This you wouldn't do this normally. Like you can see, I'm taking a lot of damage, and that's when I have repel missiles on this scuff. Um, but I'd really like to get rid of him, so I don't have to deal with him. He drank a heal wounds potion, I think. Um, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, okay, good, we got him. Alright. I'd really like to deal with him now, rather than uh, when we're low on HP, running away from, say, a double-headed ogre. Let's go to the third stair. Alright, he had a... what did he have? Holy Wrath, okay. Uh, that was scary. Uh, head back to the stair. I'll pull him up when he gets to me. All right, and we can probably just fight him. We've got vamp training in case he starts winning. Yeah. I'm just thinking it might be worth. No, we're training. I went. I went on a long speech earlier in the series about how on a mummy you can't afford to train too many skills. I was about to say, I think I might train some short blades as well. Uh, no, this is enough. Um, but sometime in the future, I think it might be worth learning short blades. Um, being able to fight with the dagger of venom is useful. Uh, but as well, if if we get Kiku to bless one of our weapons uh, with pain, a dagger is a really good weapon because it's a really fast one. So it does obscene amounts of damage with pain on it. But I guess maybe this trident could be really good too. Um, a spear of pain is surprisingly really good for the same reason because it's really fast and it lets you reach. So yeah, uh, I guess we'll wait on that anyway. Here's another centaur. Um, I'll yell because he didn't see me and I'll step around the corner and then he'll come to me. I step adjacent to him so he doesn't shoot me at range. Damn training. Alright. Regular ogres are uh, okay. It's really the double headed variety that we're super afraid of. Okay. Uh, let's vamp train him. Let's not take another shot quite like that. Still can't get cocky though, when they're swinging for dirty something damage. Um, this looks like a really good time for corpse rot. We've got a hallway like this, and there's a corpse here with all these things lined up. Alright, corpse rot. Okay, sick. Alright. So this stuff's just going to sit there, and what it does, I can paint it. Uh, the wyvern stood on top of... The water macassan zombie so I can corpse rot him too and once I did that he realized I may as well just run at him but he's slowed and poisoned so yeah it's pretty much dead as soon as he gets the corpse rot okay we're out of mana um how afraid are we of a black bear probably pretty afraid if he goes berserk we're kind of in trouble which is why I'm not instructing my jackal skeleton to go run at him um, I wouldn't mind picking up this shiny sh 
chainmail too. Um, that could be useful for all we know. My auto pickup was off for some reason. I think maybe a wizard went invis earlier. Alright. <laughs> I like how it's been a, <laughs> about 35 minutes and we're still on d7, which is where we started the episode. Ah, uh, I did. Okay, I didn't mean to come down that stair. That's the double headed ogre stair. Uh, playing mummy is hard. That's the point I was trying to make, I suppose. Spellcasting to 9. I think that's enough for now. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, we're focusing our um, defensive skills at the moment. Maybe once I get necromancy to 11, maybe even 12, I think I'll stop at that point. We'll see. With evocations at 1.2, our blink has gone to 24%, which is still a relatively high fail rate. Uh, if I can get the orc to come into the hallway like this, uh, did I get a corpse? I did. Alright, so we get the corpse right off. It didn't slow him, but that's okay. If he goes berserk like that, um, and I've got mana, it's fine. I can vamp drain him. It was more, I was worried about him going berserk when I had no way to actually do anything about it. Okay. Uh, well, you can't eat anyway. So I was gonna say you can't eat to mutate. You can't mutate yourself as a mummy, but I actually got a stab. <laughs> I do like no damage because I have no stealth skill or short blades. All right, so you can't mutate yourself as a mummy, but you can't eat. So uh, we doubly couldn't do mutagenic flesh. Hmm, that's kind of bad. There's an invis wizard there, and there's a or priest sitting behind him. Okay, so the wizard came wrapped around this way. That's okay. Pain can't miss, although there's the priest. Uh, we don't want to have both of them hitting us. Uh, the wizard still has a 5% to confuse us, which like doesn't sound like that much, but when 5% um, means you have a very good chance of then dying, uh, it's too much. I haven't seen the two headed ogre again. What I can do as well is I can hit Control E, which means I pace my travel speed at my slowest ally. So when I'm auto exploring around with um, O, or if I'm traveling somewhere with Shift G. Uh, it means that I walk at the same pace as my skeletons or zombies. Um, it's a nice thing to do because uh, it means that when you meet new enemies, you don't have to run back to your army. They'll always be with you. Alright. So apparently we've cleared the floor, but I know there's another double-headed zombie. Um, keep thinking zombie because I had a zombie at one point. I know there's a double-headed ogre running around. Alright, so there's a Bailey on this level. Uh, Bailey can sometimes have really good things. There are lots of Baileys that we probably would struggle with. But then again, I guess we have corpse, received corpses, so maybe we wouldn't. Um, I'm going to magic map it. And it's in the middle here. You can search for downstairs and it will show you. Yep, it's this yellow thing in the middle here. Alright, so let's head towards that. Hopefully no double-headed ogres on the way. Why is this hound skeleton so difficult? Okay. Crimson Imp that we barely do anything to. Alright. Uh, a glowing dagger, I'll pick it up, but um, we can't really risk wielding it because we don't have remove curse. All right, uh, this looks like the one with pole arms, is it? I don't know, they're just throwing things at me. Uh, this one's fine because I can, wait, it's not fine. Oh wait, no, it is fine, okay, because there's a, a ring of flight. I was gonna say, um, I think this one relies on um, coughing potions of flight to get across, which as a mummy, we obviously can't do. But with a ring of flight, we can. 
Um, I wish they would step to me. Okay, I need to be careful of the Orc Warlords because uh, when they throw Tomahawks, they're going to really hurt. If he steps on that corpse there, I'm going to corpse rod him. He did. Man, okay, sick. I wonder if he's going to... He's not going to die from that. Come at me. He's back. Is there still corpse there? No. Um, but if he doesn't have a ranged weapon like this, we can just hit him with the pain from range. Although... You see, once he realizes he can't part to us, he starts running away. <laughs> so weak. Okay, we got him. Evocations to 2, that's pretty sweet. That makes our blink go to 21. Okay, that's still not amazing. I can make some... Um... Some skeletons there. Although, not really helping. It's just a kobold skeleton. It's actually not that exciting. Ooh. There's a magical plate armor. Um, probably too heavy for us though. Uh, actually, almost certainly too heavy for us. I like how we're carrying around all these different types of armor though. We've got a robe on, and we've got a shiny chain mail and a rune skin scale mail. So what what's wrong with picking up a a shiny plate mail as well. I think there's a corpse there. No, there wasn't. Okay. Uh, gotta take this slowly, just in case these dudes have tomahawks. They didn't. Sweet. That guy willingly walked into the miasma. He's an idiot. I hope Knight's a little bit cleverer. Is there a corpse there again? No. Okay, I need to go back and heal. Oh, we're out of magic. <laughs> Man, this is this feels so um, cheesy. What's going on here? <laughs> but that's fine. If you guys want to set up your camp behind a moat like this, that's uh, your own fault. I really don't want to run over there while the orc um, knight is still alive. And that guy has a large shield, that's pretty cool. Although, getting to 26 shield with a minus 2 aptitude as a mummy does not sound like a very good prospect. I can put this ring of flight on. It's a 21% chance to evoke it and fly over there. Let's go. I know the knight's still there. So I need to be really careful. Um, but I need to lure him back. What if I yell a bit? If he got adjacent to me and then I failed a flight to get back over the water, that'd be the most sad death ever. Let's evoke... I need to stop flying first and then we can evoke it again. Like that. We failed to use our ability, but he wasn't next to us. Imagine if that happened though. We failed again? Oh, I accidentally did blink. Oh man, I gotta be careful. Uh, flight. No, blink. They're right next to each other. We failed again. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Lol. Apparently it's really hard. In here, we can take as many turns as we want. We're a mummy. We could wait for thousands of turns. There's no out of depth timer that's going to spawn here inside Bailey. So, we're never going to starve to death. Just take this slowly. Yeah, let's pick up the glowing plate armor. We can check it out later. And that is a rune large shield. Also pick that up. Not going to test it without remove curse though. Because that 100% will not allow us to cast spells. Um, but maybe it's... Maybe it's a plus 8 large shield of protection. That would be pretty good. Okay, there are two of them. Please, please, please do not fail to fly. It's... I gotta stop flying first. Oh wait, I'm still flying, I can just go. Okay, never mind. It's all good. <laughs> oh, I was panicking. Come at me. Come at me. You can path to me, what are you doing? Okay, I'm starting to lose my buoyancy, I need to go back over. It checks, do I really want to do it? Yes. 
It's not like old times where you'll immediately drown. Um, it will drain you, which is still bad, but at least it's not an insta death anymore. Oh man, this is a real pain. <laughs> Get him. We know there's one more. We need to fly again. Uh, we can get... Oh yeah, a bunch of zombies. Okay, sweet. We might even just be able to fight this orc knight. Where are you? This is scary. There he is. Okay, we step back behind our zombies. Let's let our zombie comms have a go at getting him. I don't think these ones will do it because they're just random hobgoblins and kobolds, kobolds. So I'm going to start running back towards the water again. Okay, let's fly. Careful to press the right one, we fail it. Okay, we fly. Alright, let's go. Here we go with the cheese. He ran out energy me to hit me there. But it's alright because he can't actually get me. I can throw javelins when he's far away. Got him. And can make a skeleton out of him. Got two scrolls of something. Um, I'd like to finish off this this area before I read those. <laughs> Look at that. There's a haste potion. We can't use those. They're really nothing here. I guess the loot was just the items those guys had. Um, what you can do is go control F and then a dot and it displays all the items near you. Is anything else here? Not really. I mean a broad axe, that's kind of rare. Do I really want to pick up 34 tomahawks of returning? We could become a throwing guy. Uh, not really. I guess it's worth picking up. Alright, let's pick him up. Oh, we need to fly. Alright, let's get all the tomahawks. If for some unknown reason we decide we want to be a throwing guy, uh, we can pick up all these tomahawks. There's nothing else here though. Um, maybe that scroll we picked up though. I mean, uh, maybe it's acquirement and that's why it was there. So I'm going to go check this hatch first. And then, let's see if that was a climate. No, just remove curse. That lets, lets us try these things though. Do we have a venom plus two? That's better than the dagger, I think. This one is flaming. That's no good. Flaming is not exciting on a low damage weapon like a dagger is. And the trident is anti-magic. Uh, you see how much that destroys our magic when we equip it. We go down to seven total. So we can't really use that. Yeah, I think that's basically, I guess if we, if we get in a situation with someone with scary magic, like Harold, Harold is still kind of scary, even though we're not fire vulnerable anymore, we could still hit him with it. All right, and I guess I ID something. Oh, it means I can do all my um, rings now, because I have removed curse. So let's see what we've got. Ring of fire. Okay. So there you go. We can get RF now. Protection from cold. Okay, useful but not amazing because we already have it. Curse loudness. I may as well try this other ring. See in vids. All right. Um, and why not? Let's just try all these armors and things. The rune large shield is a plus one of protection, and then our spells become. You know what? They're not really that bad. The worst one, animate dead at 26%. I think I want to be a shield user. That gives us 11 shield and it gives us an extra 3 AC, I think. Let's have a look at the other shield. Yeah, so it takes us back to 4 AC and only 6 shield. But if we just do that, our spells are all really castable. Alright. Um, I think this is worth it. What's our, our blink off? Oh, we don't have it on at the moment. 
Uh, let's test these other armors first. Plus two chainmail fire resistance. That's really nice too. But uh, yeah, if we put that on, we're definitely not casting anything. Just out of curiosity. Plus three of fire resistance. Okay, so the game is really, really trying to help us as a mummy. Here, take all these fire resistant armors. And a plus one scale mail of fire resistance. What is going on? Can we cast in that? No. Uh, that's that's super funny though. Game game is really really trying to help us out, but no, we're using a robe for the moment. Um, okay, so we remove curse. Uh, we put our well, we drop curse loudness. We put our RF blink ring back on, and our blink is at nineteen percent. With we'll very soon have three points of evocations. So I think what I'd like to do is once I get to 3 evocations I'll turn it off once I get to 11 necromancy I'll turn it off and once I get to 4 dodging I'll turn it off and then I'm going to start focusing shields um, yeah I guess this is a bit too risky to have on right now so I'm just going to have the shield for the moment and then uh, once I get a little bit of shield skill and it lets me actually cast then I'll switch back over. But if I walk around with a 25% chance to fail, it means that my uh, received corpses animate dead play becomes a lot scarier or a lot less reliable anyway. So I think uh, apparently there are way more enemies on this floor. A whole new no pack. Interesting. I should step around this corner because the North Sergeant is just hitting me from range. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay, evocations to three. Turn that off. My skeleton was fighting someone. Oh, the double headed ogre. Okay, are there more things here? I can't tell. I can try to corpse rot. No, okay. Um. These guys are definitely not killing a double header ogre. I just want to go up. Okay, <laughs> let's get off this floor. Uh, I just wanted to do a little detour to test out all those other armors and things. Fighting's at 9, that's fine. We're leaving fighting on. Let's go downstairs away from this double header ogre. Okay, we got to 3 Piety, which is another book, Kiku's Reference Book of Darkness. This has um, Dispel and Dead in it, it's really good. We got Death Channel, um, also really good. And then Agony and Excruciating Wounds. Uh, I'll probably talk about those next episode now, because this one's been going kind of long. I'm going to get downstairs, back to the one we've already seen. Alright. And then I'm going to call that an episode. Uh, we'll be looking for Lair in the next one. So that's, it's been pretty slow going so far. But I mean, that's basically the, the mummy streak life. Three episodes to get to D9. <laughs> feels, feels slow, man. But we're going to be looking for Lair. So hopefully we'll see you back for that one. Bye.